One of the nice things about my job is I get to go to all sorts of interesting places and today I've come down to wintry Wiltshire to find out a little bit more about what it's like to be a fish farmer. If you're a carp fanatic, you really want to be stood where I am now because looking into this tank and indeed the others around me are some of the most stunning carp that you will ever lay your eyes upon. There's some beautiful mirrors, commons and some heavily scaled beasties that really are just to die for. And you know what? They're down to the hard work and dedication of the guys down here and in particular, Mr. Tony Campbell. My name's Tony Campbell. I've been fish farming for about 25 years now. For the last 15 years, I've been a carp farmer in particular. There's just something about carp. I find them quite intelligent, uh, more so than other fish that I've farmed over the years. Um, I've discovered characters of certain broodstock that I've, uh, I've worked with, um, and you get to know different character traits. Being a fish farmer can be quite stressful. Um, it's not all about walking around the ponds and feeding your fish and saying, oh, look at that one, isn't that a pretty one? You've got to make sure they're all healthy and happy, uh, but the rewards are there. One of the nice things about aquatic nurseries is that they breed their own carp on their own sites. So as a result, they know the age, pedigree, and also the growth rate of every single fish they sell. They're most definitely classed as fish farmers and breeders rather than fish dealers. We do not buy in other fish, uh, we do not bring any other fish to site. We produce all our own carp on site, which again gives the customer confidence in there's nothing else going to be contaminated with those fish. When we breed fish, basically we, we would choose the, the brood stock we want to breed from. We microtip the fish as well, so we can identify certain parents. We would inject them with a pituitary gland. The eggs will be stripped into the bowl. Um, we will then obtain the milk from the males. We know how to do this because we're doing it all the time, so it's something I would not suggest anybody tries doing on the bank. You do need to be trained in how to strip the fish without damaging the organs in the internal body cavity. Once we've harvested the eggs and the milk from the fish, they would come into our hatchery, and then afterwards you'll see the fish that you've seen in the bowls here as fry that we feed the Artemia to. Being a live food, that is the best form of food they could possibly get in their early stages. After four to six weeks, they will need to go into the tanks rather than the bowls, and we'll put them through our first grade to grade off the shooters. Uh, the shooters are fish, I believe, have just eaten more food early on rather than a genetics thing. Once we grade it off the shooters, we will grow them on there for a little bit longer before we put them outside. We need to put them outside to harden them up and get them used to that outdoor environment. Obviously, we continue to feed them outside until they turn into the, the gorgeous carp that we have, um, of sort of like 5, 10, 15, 20 pounds. We've got the highest officially recognised health status of any carp farm in the country. It means that we've got foot dips everywhere. Every single system has its own net dip, uh, different buckets and equipment and nets used on those systems. Not because we are trying to stop disease within our own farm. What we're trying to do is expose the fish to different bacteria, parasites, all the way through their life cycle. If you give them too much too soon, then that will be detrimental to that fish. Mixing ornamentals with carp isn't risky for us because we produce the ornamentals here. If you were to purchase the ornamentals elsewhere and then bring them onto site, then yes, it's a major risk because a lot of the SBC and KHV that come into this country are brought in from imports from elsewhere. 
What you need to look out for is that your stock that you intend to buy aren't disease free. We put six fish actually in total into the roach pit, um, all hand selected, and obviously there's not been a stocking on the roach pit for 15 years. So it was important for that customer that he was getting disease free stock. Uh, we are able to show people around so they can see what they're going to buy. Um, there is the chance as well that some customers like to actually hand select some fish. Uh, tends to be over about the, the double figure mark when they, when they would pick those out. But we have what we call our restocking mix, which is sort of 20% of all the different varieties. 20% linears, 20% commons, 20% sparser scaled, etc. So there's a little bit of everything in there for everybody and everybody's got different tastes. Well, there we go. That's been a really interesting and eye-opening day down in the life of a fish farm. The big thing for me is it's really nice and reassuring to see that you can go out and buy fish that are completely and utterly disease-free. In fact, rated to the highest possible CFAS level and therefore the future, as far as stockings, is now risk-free and very bright. What makes me happy about the fish farming is, is producing large amounts of good quality carp that I can put my name to. When you get good growth levels and uh, produce fish that are gorgeous to look at, it, it, it's quite rewarding. Basically, I can't think of another job where in the morning I want to get up and go to work. And for me, that's the best reason to be doing this job. <laughs>